Hey guys, Zarek here, and today I'm bringing you guys another video, and one thing I've noticed on my channel is the Inform 7 tutorials that I did a few years back are my probably my most popular videos uh, to date, and still get some comments today on people using them, and I thank you guys for that. Um, so I decided I'm going to do this tutorial, uh, which is for Twine. Uh, Twine is very similar to Inform 7 in the fact that it's a interactive fiction um game engine so to speak um but i feel like it's not only easier but it's more current uh, i believe in form 7 is now getting updates but back when i did the tutorial it wasn't um so i don't really use that anymore i use twine all the industry professionals use twine trust me i have spoken to god knows how many game writers and narrative designers and they all recommend twine and ink uh ink i'm going to try and do a tutorial on at some point but it's a little bit more complex than Twine. So I thought I'd get the Twine one out and see what happens. So without further ado, we're going to go straight into it. So this is the website of Twine, twinery.org. Uh, there is two versions of Twine. There's Twine 1, Twine 2. We will be looking at Twine 2 today. Now, you can download Twine. Uh, I actually do have it downloaded. For some reason, the icon doesn't exist, but it's uh, this one here. Uh, but we're just going to use the online version today. Uh, you don't have to download twine to use it uh, for 99.9% of product uh, projects you'll do you'll probably won't need to download it but if you're doing anything that requires multimedia so images sounds and whatnot you'll need to download it so we're just gonna hit use it online and uh, this is gonna look a bit scary to you guys uh, but trust me it's not I'll walk you through it now the reason it says eight stories is these are basically all my projects uh, a lot of them are just tests, I don't even know what this one is, for example. Uh, but that's a test, that's an old version of this. Uh, Rise of the Crowd Dip being my most recent interactive fiction game. I and mean, then these are all like tests and stuff like that. Um, so there isn't really too much uh, to be scared on here. Uh, beauty about Twine is I've recently just made a light and a dark mode. So everyone can go to dark mode because if you're someone that uses light mode, you should probably click off this video. Um, so, what we have here, we have plus story, import from file, archive formats, language, and help. Now, help, I haven't actually used, I don't actually know where it goes. Okay, it goes to the Twine guide, that's actually really good, we'll go into that in a second. Uh, language, I assume, is like English and stuff like that, yes it is. Um, formats, uh, we can leave this for now, uh, and the reason why I say we'll leave this for now is because we can sort that out in a second when we actually get into a story. Uh, import from file and archive. Now archive is um, you can save them into a .rar file or a .zip file uh, for transferring them over if you're doing like uh, different PCs. So for example I work a lot in a uh, game studio in the Games Academy at Falmouth University and if I wanted to take my work from there and then do it at home on this PC I can just hit archive, upload it to like Google Drive or something and there you go. Uh, you can also just uh, save the HTML file, which we'll get into in a second, and do it that way without having to archive everything. But if, for example, I wanted all of these, I can then just archive it. And then uh, on the flip side, if you have the archive or you have the HTML file and you want to put it back on your PC, you just hit import from file, click on the HTML, and then it will come up in here. But for now, yours should be blank uh, unless you've used Twine before. Uh, so we're just going to hit plus story and we can name it anything, it can be changed later, that's probably why I have loads of J's and V's over here, I still have no clue what that actually is. Uh, but we're just going to make this one YouTube and then it brings up this. Um, again, looks a bit scary, it's not, trust me. Let's walk you through it. Right, so we'll start from the bottom and then we'll work over here because this is where the more complicated stuff is over here. So, plus passage, each of these over here is a passage. Passages are things you're working in. Think of it like a uh, a script compile type thing. You know, if you're working in a um, if if you're working in Unity, you have different scripts for different things. Um, or think of it even simpler as a page in a book. That's probably the best way to think of it is a page in a book. Each one of these is something that the player will see as if they were turning the page. So, for example, in this passage right now, it will always say double click this passage to edit if you don't have anything. Right, and if I hit the play button, uh, you can see it will just come up with double click this passage to edit because at the moment that's the text that's in that passage. Right? Uh, if I make a new passage, at the moment it won't do anything. 
but very simply if we then just put uh so this will be what untitled passage one uh it needs to be um caps and space sensitive um so i'd recommend like copy and pasting it and then we do the two brackets here and then we put what the passages and two brackets these two brackets are diverts so basically it means that this will be a clickable option and once this is clicked it will then take you to here so very simple if we put hi in there we press play you can see we're going to click on title passage one and hi now we'll go into a little bit more detail on them in a second um but i just wanted to show that as the start uh, test again it's very similar to the play button but it will actually show you any variables that you have uh, obviously at the moment we don't have any variables but it'll show you the variables and you can see what the variables come to uh, it's a nice way of seeing whether your variables actually works um, and in a future episode I will show you guys a bit more of a complex system on variables uh, with the rise of the crowd here where it gets a little bit messy um, these buttons here I would mostly pretty much ignore they're just how the passages are seen uh, so you can have them like that where there's titles, you can have them like that where you can see the start of the text uh, and then you can have them like that which is really tiny and I probably wouldn't recommend. Um, now the hard part is actually finding where the hell the passages are uh, because for some reason it doesn't centre right. That's one thing I don't like about Twine but whatever. Um, I'd recommend that if you're doing a small project stay like this. Uh, if you're doing a bigger project, go like this uh, when it gets to, you know, like 100 passages. Because uh, unfortunately there is no, like, file system, uh, folder system, uh, which is one of the negatives of Twine 2. I believe in Twine 1 you could, but in Twine 2 you can't. So it's unfortunate, but this is the best way to probably save space. Uh, and if you're really reserving space, go into that one, but I wouldn't recommend that. And then quick find. Quick find, um, it'll be useful for bigger projects. Um, you can type a word in so for example I can type in passage and it will highlight everything that has the word passage in it um, if I put hi uh, you can see it only highlights this one I don't know why this was in yellow um, maybe be I don't know why that one's uh, coming up in yellow interesting is there a hi in this I just haven't realized I don't know regardless that's what quick find does I don't know why it's not working properly um, but it's really useful if you're like looking for a variable name and you want to see uh, every instance of the variable you can just type the variable name in the quick find and it will highlight every time that has been used now we get to the scary part and that's this bit over here now this home button it will just take you to the the uh, story page that we were just at so that's fine this part is where it gets a bit scary and we're not going to go into too much detail on this in this episode, but maybe in a future episode we will. So, edit story JavaScript, you put JavaScript stuff in there. Edit story story sheet, you put uh, cascading style sheet, I think it's called, uh, CSS, in there. Uh, unless you're doing something very complex, you're probably not going to touch them too much. Uh, I might do an episode of this with them, but probably not. Um, rename story, if you want to rename it off from YouTube. Uh, set all passages. I don't really know why you would want to do that, but you can. Uh, snap to grid. So if you want to snap these to a grid. Uh, view proofing copy. Probably wouldn't do it, but you can do it. It basically puts a really weird transcripty system um, in there. Um, and then publish the file, which will publish it to an HTML file. You save it as an HTML file. There you go. Story statistics. It will just tell you like how many passages and stuff like that. Now the final one is the scary one that isn't these two, right? Because these two are absolutely terrifying even for me. And that's change story format. Now, when it loads up, um, you'll see for some reason this chat book can't be interesting. Maybe it's gone down. Um, anyway, we, we don't need that one. So, automatically you will be set at Harlow 3.1.0. And for our tutorial, we will be looking at Harlow 3.1.0. There is Harlow 2.1.0 and 1.2.4. I've never used them. I've also never used Snowman, uh, either the 2.0.2 or the 1.4.0. Sugarcube is the other mostly used form um, of story format, of language, of passing language, whatever you want to call it, um, in Twine. Now, I might do some stuff of Sugarcube. Uh, I might go into a little bit of Sugarcube, but it's something that for this I'm probably not going to go into. Um, and 
if you're just starting out, if you're just doing something very basic, Harlow is great. If you want to do something a bit more complex uh, and do like full on big projects, Sugarcube is the way to go. And that brings me to these guides. All right, so this guide here is the Twine guide and you can also find a Harlow guide. All right, so if I just go Harlow 3.1.0 documentation, you can see here's the Harlow guide. Sugarcube also has the same uh, thing. Sugarcube also has its own guide. These guides are great. They tell you everything you need to know. The only problem with them is sometimes they do not have the examples uh, that you can just put into your situation. And that's a bit frustrating. And that leads me onto the other resource. And that is the Twine Discord. This Discord is amazing. When I was learning Sugarcube, I decided to convert the Rise of the Crowd here, which was in Hollow. Uh, over to Sugarcube so I can do some um, minor changes and stuff that I want to add to. These guys help me so much. So I really recommend joining this Discord, Twine Games Discord. I'll link it, in, uh, the invite link in the description. These guys are amazing. Um, and if you can't find anything on the Sugarcube or the Harlow or the Twine Manual, you'll the, they'll, they'll uh, point you in the right direction. Even if that's a bit of the manual that you didn't actually realize existed. I had that a few times in Sugarcube where I was looking at something and it ends up being under a different name. Um, whatever. It's there. So use those resources to help you. Now, I'm only going to go over one more thing in this episode. And that's just some very, very basics of these passages. Uh, let's get rid of this. And then the next episode, we'll look into variables. So... On the passages before we had this so we have a double click to edit it which is what you automatically get and we had the um, passage name now as you can see untitled passage one isn't exactly a good name and granted it probably wouldn't be the passage name it'd be really really lazy if you did that you'd probably name it what you're actually going to so if you're if you're going into a town and then the player can progress to a shops so you're probably going to call it like shops now something you can do is if we say we don't want this passage, all right, we can just simply get rid of this and this will become disconnected. This won't be used. All right, let's just bin this. Now let's say we do want to go to the shops. So let's say we have, uh, you enter a town and you can see the shops. Do you want to go to, and then we can put the, and then put shops. Now we did not make the passage. But this is where Twine is amazing because as we did those double brackets, it knows that we want a passage called shops. So if we close, there is now a passage called shops. It automatically made it for us. We didn't need to hit the plus passage. You can do it either way. You can make the passage and then link it, or you can just do the straight link. And that's great. But what if we want to go to the shops, but actually we want a different scenario at the shops. Right? But we don't want the player to know that they're going to a shop, uh, to a different part of the shops. So let's say that you know they're going to go to the shops, but actually uh, they end up um, getting knocked out. I don't know. Right? We could put this arrow here. All right, my mouse was blocking that. Sorry. So you can see you've got like a hyphen, and then the um, triangular bracket arrow, and let's put knockout. Now it will now make. The knockout pay, um, thing. Now when the player actually plays the game, you will see they only see the shops. They do not see knockout. So it's a really good way of diverting, I believe it is actually called a divert, um, diverting a player to a different area. This is really really useful if you need little nuances um, and little things that they can do differently or you just want to trick your player in this example they're going to the shops but actually they're about to get knocked out um, it allows then you to keep an eye on where they're going because you can see that they're going to the passage knockout but they don't actually know it and I think that's basically going to be what um, I'm going to do for this episode so next episode we're going to look at some more complex things we're going to be looking at variables um, and really getting into the meat and bones uh, and I can show you a bit of the rise of the crowd here i'll give you a sneak peek it's scary it looks hilariously scary it looks awful trust me it's not that bad
But anyway guys, this has been Zarak. I hope you guys did enjoy this twine tutorial. Let me know what you think in the description. Uh, in the description? In the comments section. And I will see you in the second part. Peace out everybody.